bad. Cool. All right. Yeah, it's been been a little while. Lots of things have been happening. Lots of things to talk about. Um, some network news, some um, some big news in the voluntary carbon space. Um, so we'll uh, I'll I'll start with some some of those updates. Um, Mark, welcome. Excited. Mark said he'd hop in and give us a quick uh, tour around some of the interfaces that are coming online for uh, Regen Network. Region Network's next big release, which is going to be really fun. Um, so you'll get to see those. I, I wanna, I, I forgot to put some of this stuff in my mouse is super laggy right now. So it's driving me bananas and I'm not gonna try to last minute put anything else in this, in this slideshow. So um, I'm gonna run through some news, some of the Commonwealth discussion stuff, uh, the recent Vera statement on voluntary carbon credits, and then we'll shift into the slideshow. Uh, we're going to be doing a little little roundup from the summit, um, very quick roundup from the summit. Then we'll pass it over to Mark for interfaces, um, and we'll just roll through some of the other news and try to be quick uh, about all of it. And um, yeah, looking forward to sharing. So um, without further ado, I'll um, see if my mouse will collaborate with me long enough to get a slideshow going. Um, wow, it's so annoying. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Okay. So quick update from the refi summit. These are just a few photos um, we can share if folks want. I think Paul, Paul was there, Daniel was there. It was great to see both of you in person. Um, this is out in Seattle. Yeah, really lovely to get to connect. Um, these I just sort of randomly pulled some uh, images from the from the feed. Our our good friend uh, David was the MC there. Lots of great conversations and in person time. Yeah, just really lovely to get to spend time with some great humans. My big takeaway is. I mean, honestly, this is kind of confirmation bias, but my big takeaway is, wow, what's, what, what's still the big gaping hole in all of this is an independent public uh, credit registry system <laughs> that everybody can use to power this whole idea of refi and all of the different instrumentation and you know new currency types and collateral forms and marketplaces. But at the end of the day, there's just a lot of hard work to build a public infrastructure for people to be able to mint ecological credits that are rich in data, have a clear community peer review process around the, the rules for minting, et cetera. So um, yeah, it was really lovely to get a lot of love from the community and I think buy-in that we're you know continuing to do our best to build that. Um, okay, so with that sort of you know, quick update. I want to pass the baton over to Mark to give us a quick, um, yeah, quick tour of the awesome work that you guys have been doing. Super excited about this. And for those of you who might want to in the future, just be looking around at this, I put a link. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, got a few things to show as far as uh, recent work we've, we've completed on the interfaces team and also a little bit um, of a preview of what we're working on currently. Um, so I will start, I guess I'll share here. One moment. All right, so starting in production here, and this is our actual live registry.regen.network. Um, main thing you're gonna notice is we got the connect Kepler button activated here. Um, there's a lot of features we've been working on that uh, we haven't made live yet. Um, 
but this is the first implementation where you'll be able to see your portfolio. And if I can figure out how to hide this. Uh, okay. All right, so I can connect my Kepler. Uh, it was pretty automatic because since I've already done it before, but you can see my address is here on hover and you could go to my portfolio. Uh, no one, most people won't have any assets yet. Um, and that's the case for me in production. But um, if we do the same thing on our Redwood testnet, um, the link that Gregory showed, this is uh, kind of what your what a portfolio might look like. Uh, you have a table of eco credits and baskets, uh, basket tokens. And I can also show really quickly some of this basket functionality. Um, so here's a batch denom, um, shows you not tradable, not retired. Uh, I can opt to send it, send eco credits to another region address or add it to a basket or retire it. Um, let's do a put in basket. Let's add it to the RNCT basket. Let's just do one. So see Kepler pop up. And we can approve this transaction. Got a successful transaction. You can view it on the Redwood Block Explorer. Um, and if I had uh, double checked these numbers, we would see that it was added here. Um, but actually another thing we can do is probably see it on, this might be a better one. Recent eco credit activity. Hmm, of course, in a demo, we don't get everything to work. Um, but anyway, let's go back to the portfolio. Um, so what that did was was add to the basket tokens, uh, and similarly, you can take from a basket token. Let's watch the numbers this time. Uh, so 9982, take from basket, I'll take one. And in this form, um, retirement is required uh, for this particular uh, token. So I can add a memo retirement note if I want. Um, and you also have to indicate your retirement location. Click take from basket, confirm in Kepler. Congrats to your transaction was successful. Let's see we're down to 99.81. And what that should have done is uh, retired the uh, correct uh, eco credit. Awesome. Yeah, it was the top one there. I can see it. Yeah. So the activity table here was also made uh, live on production. So this is showing all eco credit activity. Um, right now we're adding in the, so these are all, you see create batch, uh, create credit class. Um, these are actual, the first, uh, credit classes and batches added to our, our ledger. Um, on Redwood, we have a lot more activity. I think the ledger's hanging up a bit here, but soon you'll see, uh, also basket uh, transactions there as well. Um, so create batch, retire, retire, retire. Okay. Um, and then, so that's, uh, some recent stuff we completed. 
some stuff we're working on right now um, includes a workflow to create a batch if you are an issuer. Uh, so this is what the interface is going to look like. Um, I'll only be showing the first step here, uh, but um, this is how you can uh, issue your own credit batches if you're a, a credit class issuer. So um, our first class is the Verified Car Carbon Standard, C01. Our Redwood network has some more additional just test classes. Um, but if you click C01, you'll get a list of projects that are available under uh, the VCS standard. Um, for us, that's Kasigao and Mayandombe. So you can choose that project. Um, do your start date. Do your end date. Let's see if that was Uh, you get the VCS retirement serial number. I have one here I can paste in. Uh, this has validation to make sure it's a valid uh, VCS retirement serial number. So if I were to alter it a little bit, you can see that. It's looking for all these parts of it. And a lot of that corresponds to uh, the project ID and the start and end date. Um, you have optional extra certifications you can add. This uh, validates for proper URL. Those will get added to your metadata. Um, so that's an example of a VCS batch. Um, and there will be kind of more arbitrary. You can um, paste, we say arbitrary JSON LD metadata for other uh, credit classes. This is something that won't be available uh, for a while, but uh, it's a, a way to be flexible about how we enter metadata. Um, but yeah, soon we'll have further steps where this. Uh, you'll be able to add recipient, recipients, review, and actually at that point, once you review it, you can submit it to uh, as a Kepler transaction. Um, and yeah, that's all. That's all in progress. And... Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Super cool. Anybody want to ask any questions or um, from the audience there? before we move on it's really exciting stuff um yeah cool all right so um i'll kind of keep cranking away away here so um move back in the slideshow um yeah just sort of going over some event sponsorship stuff so we um completed the nft hackathon that was i guess last month uh, and there was some really cool stuff that happened out of that. Um, Dan, do you want to share any, quickly share any details about, about that? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fantastic turnout, um, a lot more than I think anybody expected. Uh, the Refi DAO team did a really good job um, just kind of focusing on collaboration more so than actual hacking. I mean, obviously the hacking was a big part of it, but, but a big of the big kind of rating criteria to win it was how well you were collaborating, which is awesome. Let's, you know, work together. Um, and yeah, there was a, a lot of cool projects and people want a lot of money. So yeah, it's exciting. Awesome. Very exciting. And um, our friends at Moon Hooch are doing another tree planting event, which is going to be very cool. You can uh, see what's up there at, at the link there. Oops. Um, they did a really cool event, I think, uh, a year ago, maybe two. Um, yeah, 
Oh, and Sarah is here. I didn't see that you're here. Do you want to speak to the Moon Hooch uh, event at all? I just, yeah, I real, was, real quick, sorry? I just want to say I can't see your slideshow, um, Gregory. Oh, I think I stopped sharing it, maybe. Okay. I think, yeah, I no, think you stopped sharing it. Yeah. <laughs> but real quick, Moon Hooch is a really fun uh, band. And they're doing tree planting projects with volunteers, kind of like permaculture, you know, hack plant style. Um, so they're doing another event. And in the last event, we supported them by um, gifting some regen tokens to their event volunteers. And so we are doing the same thing um, with this weekend's event, which is going to be planting two types of native trees on Sunday. So you can follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok if you want to see the photos live during the day. And we'll be kind of co-sharing some of the cool stuff that we see from their event happening. Cool. We should get them to come on the, um, come play a live set for one of these calls for five minutes. Well, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. So as always, Regenerati News Hour tomorrow. Um, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, tomorrow, Austin from the foundation is going to be hosting. I will definitely also be there. And I think the topic at hand is going to be active inferencing. Uh, Regen, R&D Inc. Uh, and Regen Foundation has been working with a group called Bioform Labs to work on some really cool machine learning and AI work related to monitoring ecological health and sort of like imbuing that into the tokenization and verification system to start to automate different pieces and kind of su support project developers and other things. This is all super sort of like in the skunk works. So this is, you, you know, if you tune in to Regenerati News Hour, you'll actually be getting like leading edge alpha that's being generated by this research team not even you know we're just going straight to the public <laughs> building in public so there's a really smart crew of people working on it and this is going to be their first external presentation even to us as a team so these folks have been working on it and uh they're going to be sharing back a little bit to the community so it should be cool um another little bit of alpha drop uh there are some shadowy anonymous humans working on some really cool regen art. Uh, there's been so much um, desire. I'm just going to move to slideshow here. There's been so much desire amongst the community to start engaging with art for fundraising, with art to attach to eco credits and other things. So some of us have started just taking initiative to start to assemble kind of a set of curate, curated lists. We're gonna start, we're gonna do the first minting over at, in Stargaze. Um, and then eventually NFTs will be coming to Region Ledger. And so some of these may migrate onto Region Ledger, some of them may not, but we're going to continue to sort of build this sort of origination system and the ability to assemble eco credits, link them to projects, link them to NFTs. This is sort of all slowly evolving. Here's an example of some of the art that's been getting generated and and that we're playing around with so um yeah should be pretty fun um miles to go uh but stay tuned and if people want to ping you can reach out um in um you could reach out in the region ft and i'll sort of be posting some stuff in the region ft um channel and discord and if you want to get put on the white list for minting uh just you know just reach out there and we'll start assembling a little white list for folks for the first mintings um, and uh, oh, just all of the proceeds from these mintings are going to just get cycled into project support. So if you have stuff that you'd like to be considered for that, I think we're also going to be starting to generate sort of like some proposals for where these funds are just getting flowed to, for, to support community initiatives. So um, reach out, Regen FT is the Discord channel to be chatting about this. Um, and if you want to jump in and collaborate and do things, I mean, we'll probably do many successful mintings and other things, but, uh, you know, feel free. Um, all right. So there's some really exciting guide work coming together. Sarah B, do you want to take this one? Or is this a, is this a Dan one? I can, I can talk about it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so go, go for it, Dan. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so we just we really recognize the need for 
you know, documentation, which we've been working on a lot, but also tutorials, you know, there's new people coming into the ecosystem. Um, as we've talked about in the past, a lot of our community is actually on the ground and they're not necessarily computer people who are stuck on Discord all day long. So um, <clears throat> just wanted to really get some basic wallet functionality stuff out there. Um, the community pool one was finished. Most of you have probably, probably already seen that one. Uh, governance and even down to the regen Discord, how to use Discord and Commonwealth and all that good stuff. So um, the registry guides is something that I'll be working on here very soon. So yeah, looking forward to that. There was children in the background. Um, governance discussion. Uh, thanks for adding this, um, Dan. So this is a big one. I, you know, and we only have, we have about eight minutes left. I was actually kind of hoping to, to talk about this. So folks, if you'd like to, um, the rest of the news, you know, it's just like the rote stuff, like liquidity re report surprise. It's kind of crappy right now. <laughs> so going back to the important stuff, governance discussion. Um, there's a forum post. I will click over to here and just show uh, adding tokens to the region um, ledger currency allow list. So this is where we as a community can add tokens to the allow list. Um, nothing is added there. Right. So if we want to be able to use region, if the community would like to be able to use region to to buy eco credits, someone needs to bring that proposal. Um, if someone would like e euros or Axelar USDC, um, people need to bring a proposal to the community. In this in this specific uh, post, I'm really outlining what I hope matures to a signaling proposal that has sort of like the criteria for people to be making this type of decision by so that the community can kind of come together and say, oh, these are criteria that we think we should debate about whether or not the token fits these criteria in order to kind of like have community consensus about how to make this type of decision. And the criteria that I'm suggesting um, we consider are, is the token in question a currency, right? Um, is it IBC compatible, which is a technological question? Um, and is it liquid, stable, and safe to use, right? And those are the three things that I think, you know, are worth kind of talking about, thinking about, and then choosing to embrace things that sort of meet those in some way. And then there's also a set of principles that I'm suggesting also might enter into the conversation and it's like edge us one way or the other that we should be considering, which is, is the currency in question, does it have ethical alignment with region network? Um, is there a virtuous cycle of some sort with region networks um, economy and the generation of eco credits? And I outline a couple of examples that might in the future have that kind of virtuous cycle. Um, so I would love it if people wanted to go and chime in with their opinions here. Daniel, thanks for sharing. Some other folks did as well, um, Will included. So um, I'll open it up and see if people have um, questions or comments that they'd like to share. Yeah, I guess my question there, Gregory, is like what, like, I guess what are the implications or risks of making a bad decision? Like, what does like if 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 a certain yeah I I I'm not quite sure. Yeah, what are the risks of adding? Like, let's say all currencies were added, <laughs> you know, or or Luna was added, right? Like, what 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 do you foresee? Like, how would that? Um, or, or UST. Yeah, if, if UST had been added and people had been transacting in UST, I guess the risk to people would have been that if they were holding UST as part of their business operations, they would have lost all of their money. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a risk to both parties. Um, I think there are so that's one thing it's just like the stability the safety of the currency in in question um it's stability 
right? So it could be that it's complicated if prices are fluctuating wildly to, you know, to to post buy sell orders, for instance. Like if you're exactly. selling and you say, I want to sell it for 10 region and region goes from, you know, 50 cents to 40 cents. It's like, oh, you know, I actually wanted the, the stable unit of account. That's why we're sort of suggesting that at the very least, we'd be considering some stable coins. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think my personal preference is to see a couple of good options for people, not a single option. I think over time, um, we may sort of start to coalesce on a unit that makes a lot of sense and that everybody starts using. But I think at this stage, it's probably best for people to have a couple of options, um, as many as possible, right? Um, another high level thing is just the community, someone from the community is really going to need to take responsibility to um, engage and put forth a proposal for um, any currency that's going to be added. We at R&D Inc. are not going to be bringing the proposal um, forth. So we're, we sort of like have set forth our opinion about the criteria for people to be thinking about. We'll bring that to go the governance vote to, just, you know, after there's some conversation about, is this good criteria? Do we need to update this? We'll bring that as a signaling vote. And that people can sort of like opine about that just so there's like a precedent to point back through and reason about as validators and delegators, but then um, actually adding currencies to the allow list, adding new tokens, I should say, precisely, adding new tokens to the allow list that we're suggesting should be currencies, consider, considered currencies, um, is going to be something that community members need to do. We can also, we're reaching out to folks like that, that are running projects like e-euro or whatever and suggesting, hey, if you really want to see adoption, you might consider bringing this proposal to the community. Mm -hmm. So that's another part of the puzzle. Right, I see you mentioned Cello and Maker and Inter here as well, yeah. Yeah, so Cello of the three of those doesn't have, you know, e-euro and DAI are both available on Osmosis. So that, that right. means there's versions of them by IBC that could be used. Um, and USDC is available on Osmosis right now. So there's versions of those that could be, they each have their pros and cons. You know, if I was sort of sharing, uh, my personal opinion is it probably makes sense to, you know, probably makes sense to allow list. There's pros and cons to this, but probably at this stage, it probably makes sense to allow list, you know, any of them that aren't horrible. I had my restraints about Terra. Right, <laughs> and I, but but these are all of these other ones. I think are solid in good faith, like um, projects that don't have that kind of existential risk yeah. as easily that, as Terra did. So, but um, yeah, okay, thanks. But thanks for that question. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, we're kind of bumping up against the edge of the of the top of the hour here. So, if there aren't any other um, questions i'll um yeah i'll start to wrap and as always we'll be back um oh i see there was an interface question that mark uh, answered great thanks um we'll be back in two weeks we have regenerati news hour uh tomorrow it's going to be a good one i think with matt talking about active inferencing should be really interesting um i think in the future, these calls, we're going to sort of be doubling down on these uh, community dev calls and trying to bring them to life and make sure that this is a strong connection point for us to be sharing what's happening, for community members to be sharing with each other, and for different teams. Like today, we had the interfaces team give us a little tour. I think we'll start to have the blockchain team give us a little tour. We'll get the science team to come and give us a little tour. So we'll be sort of continuing to rotate through the voices that you're hearing and trying to make these as strong of an anchor point for really having an understanding of all the things that are moving as we can. And also this will be a very strong anchor point for you know, news making its way out into our other channels and cycling back to Discord. So just to sort of reiterate what our intention is for the call as we're wrapping up here. So um, super grateful for everybody's time and you know, everybody I see on the call is doing great work. So thank you all. Um, if you've got any needs, just let us know. Uh, Discord's always great. Um, and uh, yeah, 
have a fantastic rest of your week. Ciao, everyone. Thank you. Bye.